My name is Herman Hauser and I'm founder of Amadeus Capital Partners. They're wrong. <laughs> it is, uh, uh, it is, uh, I'm sure there are people who are over-promising and have been over-promising for a long time and that's why uh, AI of course has had these various AI winters. Uh, but the unusual thing with uh, ChatGPT and large language models is they are actually working. Uh, they're uh, producing productivity increases almost immediately in all the companies that uh, mention LLMs. So they are, in my opinion, probably the most important new technology uh, this decade. I think the uh, this is a result of the unexpected success of unsupervised learnings, uh, learning that we could um, increase the, uh, the, the training set, increase the databases uh, to incorporate more and more uh, until we've now basically covered all of human knowledge in a single uh, foundation model, as they are called, uh, with uh, over 100 billion parameters. So it's the sheer size of it. Uh, and the thing that uh, the researchers discovered uh, whilst doing uh, these large language models is that as the uh, language models grew by, say, an order of magnitude, it just it did not only grow by an order of magnitude and cover uh, more areas, but it all of a sudden could do things uh, that it couldn't do before. So there are emergent uh, phenomena. And one of the most exciting emergent phenomena is this only happened with uh, GPT-4 is that you can see early signs of reasoning, uh, even in these large language models, although they're not designed uh, for reasoning. Uh, yes, I do. Not necessarily because they become very much larger, because they're already very large, although uh, an increase in the size will help. Uh, <clears throat> but there are new techniques appearing uh, that uh, will allow us to get rid of the hallucinations, because as I'm, I'm sure you heard, uh, these large language models often produce uh, complete fantasies, things that are just wrong. Uh, and making sure that this does not happen, of course, is uh, is a very active area of research. Well, by structuring the way the system works uh, and making the, the foundation of the calculation uh, a reason chain uh, rather than just statistics. And uh, William Tunstall Pedo, who I mentioned uh, on stage, uh, has this uh, company called Unlikely AI, uh, where he has invented uh, a UL, as he calls it, a universal language, which is a computer language. But it is a computer language that's very close to a, a natural language. So it's very easy to translate German or English into uh, this uh, universal language. But the universal language, because <coughs> uh, it is a natural language, uh, can then reason. Uh, it can say, well, um, you know, a, a black car is um, a car with the property of being black. Uh, and so these relationships of color and the car get explicitly uh, represented in this uh, universal language because it's a semantic language. It represents meaning rather than just a, um, uh, a database node. Well, potentially, um, uh, very uh, far-reaching consequences, uh, one of which, uh, which I'm particularly excited about, uh, is the uh, evidence engine, which would be a real-time fact-checker. As people speak, you would uh, be able to check whether what people are saying is uh, supported by a lot of evidence out there, either scientifically or from other people, whose uh, judgment uh, you value, or whether it's actually an outright lie, uh, because it's, you, you can actually find that out in real time, or whether it's uh, just nonsense. I, I, I have great hopes that these real-time fact-checkers uh, will bring in the extremes of, the, of our polarized society, because the reason why these extremes uh, exist is because at the extreme end, both on the left and on the right, rhetoric wins over any factual uh, arguments. Uh, it just becomes a sort of hype 
excitement that uh, that people believe just wrong things in, uh, as I think has been amply documented in the press. If you look at how we uh, solve problems as humans, uh, there is a sort of two-stage process. Uh, if you see a problem, uh, you think, wow, how am I going to solve this problem? And there might be hundreds of ideas coming into your brain, uh, many of which might not even make it into your consciousness. And uh, many that enter your consciousness say, hey, this is stupid, this is stupid, nah, this is never going to work. And then a few remain and you say, ah, well, maybe that needs further investigation and we ought to really think about this more carefully. Uh, what generative AI has done, it's, it's actually quite good at, at bringing up lots of crazy ideas, uh, some of which are just crazy, some of which are just wrong, but some of which are quite interesting and therefore worth taking forward. And uh, with, the, with the universal language, uh, with, from unlikely AI, we can then check whether these ideas uh, actually make sense and why they would be a good idea or why they would not be a good idea. Because one of the exciting aspects of the, uh, the ticker at the bottom of the, the TV screen, which I described in my uh, little lecture, uh, this real-time fact-checking, is that if people um, see lots of evidence, for example, in the screen and it's supporting what the person said, they can actually touch this and they will then find an explanation of why there is, what the evidence is and what the reasoning is behind saying that what the person has just said uh, is correct. Well, because AI has been trained of, on everything and because climate change is such a holistic problem, uh, it really is all-encompassing at the moment. Uh, there's just so many components. The, the, uh, the IPCC model is one of the most complicated models uh, the world has ever, ever seen. Uh, large language models are just very, very good at dealing with complexity. So uh, one of the main benefits uh, of LLMs are these uh, what-if calculations, so that people can uh, ask questions. Well, what if I uh, you know, did some geoengineering, which is a very controversial uh, technology? Would this really help? Or what, what, what are the dangers of it? So running through scenarios um, in a, in a what-if uh, uh, kind of uh, manner, I, I think, could be very helpful.